Oh, uh, I didn't have everything set up right, and I thought I was on my starting screen, but oops. All right, so uh, you're going to have to bear with me. Uh, welcome everybody to the stream. Uh, I had some technical difficulties. None of the keybinds were working for this, and uh, I've only had very limited time to get things working on this. But I think it should all work now. I still don't know anything about what I'm doing, basically. But uh, I also will apologize for the uh, positioning of the game. When you're in the UI, it's at a fixed size, which uh, I can't do anything about. And I could adjust it to make it take up more of the screen, but then I'd have to adjust it as soon as I launch to not suddenly be massive. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave it as is because we're probably gonna spend a lot more time in game than we are in uh, stream. I'm gonna just quickly get us loading in so that we don't have to deal with uh, a really tiny thing. But today we are playing Falcon BMS. I've, I have actually played this before, a little bit. It was like uh, two or three years ago, and I like took off a couple times. Uh, barely managed to land, um, and then I learned how to employ sidewinders, laser-guided bombs, and dumb bombs, and proceeded to forget all of that. So we're going to have to relearn all of that right now, and this is a, like I said, one-to-one -one flight sim. So we're going to start, and we're going to close our canopy because of loud stuff going on. So we're going to hit this switch to close the canopy. And once it's closed, we're going to hit this thingy. It's going to close it. I literally have the tutorial manual sitting here on my lap, so I'm going to be reading through this as we go. And we're going to start. We want to um, get our lights on. Actually, leave that steady. Um, or no, it says flash. I don't think that's going to really matter too much. we got to get our fuel tank to normal. Um, we need to go to this panel, make sure that this is back up. We're going to turn IFF to standby. I don't think we're going to really need that much at all yet. I'm going to switch the main power onto battery. I'm just going to flip this probe heat to regular. Yeah, it's okay. This, this is pretty much just going to be a scuff stream, so... That's not going to be a big deal. All right. Next, we want to get our comms set up. All right, comms are on, and we want to be set to... We're on guard frequency... No, we're not. We want to be on two, four, three. We're going to probably just leave that as is. And we got to go to the right side. There's a lighting panel. Where's the lighting panel? I think this is it. We'll turn these on. Turn on this console. Now these other buttons don't do anything. And then we gotta switch our air source here to normal. And I don't think we don't have power for INS, so we're not going to bother with that yet. All right, and then we're going to start the engine. So we're going to go to main power. The cockpit is closed and locked, so we're going to switch to start two. So this is engine start. We're going to watch our engine here. And once this gets past the first green mark right there, we are going to move our throttle to the idle position 
I'm glad that they've got these knee boards here now. Because when I st first was playing, we didn't have any of this, so you just actually had to have all of the information on hand. So this is like all of the checklists. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pages of uh, flight checklists. But that's how actual, like, not World War II flight works. There's a lot of checklists involved to make sure everything is going right. All right, we are at 25% RPM. We will hit this little button and our throttle comes up. We see our RPMs climbing. Good. Here that starter is now off and the switch is the switch has reset itself, good. You're gonna see a lot of me doing this because that's when I'm uh, looking down at my actual laptop that has all this information on it. Oh, we want our engine anti-ice to auto. I'm gonna be skipping basically all of the testing because ideally in this game random failure shouldn't occur oh I haven't turned on uh, all this stuff so I gotta turn on a bunch of my avionics so this is like all the radio and uh, avionics this aircraft is entirely fly-by-wire so avionics are really important if it doesn't have power oh, I shouldn't have that on until this boots up all right so our MFDs are booting up but yeah if uh, this aircraft doesn't have power you can pull on the stick and do whatever you want and it doesn't like actually move any of the control surfaces and being a single engine aircraft, that's a pretty big concern because if you lose power, uh, you cannot fly this thing without power. So you've got a 10 minute fuel backup. I'm gonna recenter my track IR here. All right, and then uh, our initial navigation system, INS, we're going to set that to align. So that is uh, a system that basically takes the acceleration and direction of the aircraft and tries to figure out where it is. It's a nice backup to GPS, and to, for it to work, it has to be fed the exact position of the aircraft on the ground, and then you have to let it figure it out. All right, we're going to Oh, we got to turn on our HUD. There we go. HUD is on. We can switch to COM1. And we need to load our data cartridge, I think. I don't know how to do that. Uh, let's see. All right, load. It looks like it's loading. I it should move down this list. Okay, all right, calm, perfect.
and I don't know, so I'm gonna just go back to what I'm doing. How do I get to... oh, uh, we can... Switch to preset 2. Enter. Two, enter. Uh, that didn't work. Why is that not working? Oh, I think I need to be in a different thing. Enter. Okay. Then COM2, we want to be on 15. So 1, 5, and enter. Setting up our radio stuff. So you can see, if I hit my buttons, it's transmitting. All right, avionics setup. Let's see. FLCS switch. Where is that? So bit. Uh, I think this is probably not important at all. parking brake, we should be able to request a couple things. So we want to remove the EPU ground safety pin, and we want to remove the chocks. All right. Our air fueling is closed. Uh, check the ACM panel. So we've got our ECM panel here. Let's get this on. Uh, that is going to be our countermeasures to stop us from certain things. Uh, we want radar altimeter to stand by. Our fire control radar we're going to leave off. Depper return, I don't know what that is. Right, let me check through my checklist again. Yeah, we haven't done anything with that yet, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And countermeasures, we need to enable our chaff and our flare. We need to turn on our RWR, radar warning receiver, and uh, jammer. Set mode to auto. Program is set to one, good.
let's see, why is the RWR not working? Go up to on the bit on the RWR seat. There is no bit option. RWR is on. Let's turn it off and turn it back on again, see what happens. Huh. Yeah, so it says there's supposed to be something we run up here, but it doesn't work. I mean, it should be on. Master arm doesn't do anything or expect it to. Yeah, what the hell? Power up RWR and jammer. We already did that. Uh, we set up the ECM. warning. Is that because we don't have our fire control radar on? INS is still aligning. Well, I gotta go back through my checklist and figure out what the deal is. Actually, let's go through this checklist and see if we can't find it here. Trim checks, air fuel checks, avionics. RWR switches on, threat warning aux. But we don't have a couple things on here. Hmm. Oh, that's what I was missing. I didn't turn this on. Forgot about that. Test. Let's do uh, system test. 
system test. Huh? Take off landing configuration error. Uh, okay. Hand off the IFF or uh, RWR. Okay. Run. Uh, I don't know if I want to do something with that yet. Seat is not armed, so let's go arm our ejection seat. Should be there. We'll clear our warnings. See if they pop up again. Seat not armed. Well, it should be armed. There we go. Let's go back to INS. INS is ready. All right, let's get it into nav mode. Oxygen's on. Okay, so. Everything I think should work. I hope it'll all work. All right, nose with stealing it. Steering is engaged. We can now disengage the parking brake. And we're starting to roll forward because as expected. And our brakes are not working. God damn it. Is that really, really, really? Come on, game. A fucking A. I've got a profile I'm using, and it's just not going to work with me here. Oh, rudder's not working either. Okay, I've got an alternate control I'm using. All right, so we're going to have to end the mission and restart Goblin, after Trailer, looking at F controls. Good morning, Goblin 2. You are number one for departure. Alright, so flight controls, we need to do our rudder access, it has to be my MFG crosswinds. This is, first trigger detent, second trigger detent, why isn't this working? We can do... Break is this axis, okay. Then this might just come and bite us in the ass. So let's see if we can't find that brakes button in here and just make sure that it's working. IFF mode, IFF mode, anti-collision, master, EPU, main power, AR. Because that's just first trigger detent. We have, uh, yeah, it's our mode overrides. Okay. And frequency, the controls in this game are absolutely awful.
Wait a second, did I? Okay, I'm gonna have to try a couple things. So I've got these toe break sets. I don't know if they're gonna work. We'll hit apply. Okay, I'm gonna start us on uh, taxiway because then everything's gonna be configured and we don't have to run through that again. Because there might have been something I forgot to set up. Chan one, chan two, well, it should work. So our brakes are not working still, but at least our rudder works. This is always the worst when controls just don't freaking work at all. Oh, I can get some music going so we're not just sitting here in silence. Uh... Well, that is a little loud. mute this audio okay controllers so what the hell is going on with our flight control let's try reverse but it should have been working in one way or another we can also try to find that brake key I'm a little worried it's going to not let us double bind keys, but hopefully it should let us do it. Okay, so manual frequency, left wall, seat, DQS, alt gear, a uh, bunch of switches, brakes channel one. Okay, apply. Okay. And check this again. We'll go from the ramp. No, taxiway, because uh, we want everything configured so we can actually test this out. Because we have zero indication of what our brake keys working is.
So our brakes still just don't work. Thank you, game. Thank you very much. Oh, but our tow brakes work. Okay. So that is going to be good enough. Okay. So what do we need to do next? We need to... Uh, uh, we are not on the right page for the tower. So we gotta go COM1 and we gotta put in preset 2, enter. T, uh, re request pit. Goblin 2, Singleton, F16s, request taxi. Good morning, Goblin 2. You are number 1 for departure. Taxi, Papa, Alpha, and hold short runway 36. Uh, let's request, uh, say again. Goblin 2 1, repeat last transmission. Goblin 2, taxi, Papa, Alpha, and hold short runway 36. Right, let's pause real quick. There is uh, some information for taxiing that I want to know. So, uh, one of the issues is that you don't get uh, that binds rebound. That that's going to be annoying. But there, this is your airspeed indicator, and it's stuck at zero zero because it doesn't come on until a certain airspeed because it's indicated airspeed. And I'm trying to find the thing that will let us swap that over. Our seats armed and everything, right? Yep. All right, so we want to pause. Let's just come to a stop. There's nobody behind us, so it doesn't matter. Throttle down to idle. We will hit our parking brake just to be sure. Go to list, and we'll go to INS. That should work. Now we should see down here what our ground speed is. There we go. little diagram of the runway that we got to follow or rather the airport and we got to figure out where we're going to go to let me check my speed brakes that you know, make sure that they're not open they are in fact open and I am about to go off the taxiway so let's get back RWR is handed off, okay. Ooh. You pull into the right a bit. going to, according to the tutorial, uh, we're not following the right taxi route, but we're going to go to that parking spot right here. Goblin 2-1, contact tower for takeoff. Switch to 2 9 two, three, zero. Parking brake on. That should be COM1. We should be able to just switch to preset 3. Enter. Let's do our final pre-flight 
take off checklist. So let's just check a couple things to see if it did set us up for it. So that's on auto, everything should be on. Don't see anything that is obviously out of place. Our comms are way up, so we're gonna just turn those down a little bit. So why not? Everything is on. Well, let's get this to auto. It's on, it's on, it's on. All right. Checking my list. Let me check what the heck my landing gear is. Our landing gear dial is... Oh, I wonder if we can't actually use it, huh? Oh no wait, yeah, it's this big knob. But our landing gear button is on our throttle setup. Our V rotate. Problem two, is there a problem? Bitch, I'm working. All right, so our rotate speed is going to be 127 knots. And then we got to pretty much retract our gear as soon as we're done. So let's call ATC. Tower. Ready for departure. Goblin 2, Singleton, F-16s, ready for departure. Goblin 2, Kunsan Tower, wing 320 at 7 knots, runway 36, parking you are cleared for takeoff. All right, we're going to taxi out to the runway. Apply a little more to power to get through the turn. Gotta line ourselves nice and straight on the runway. It's runway three six, so we wanna be aligned right on the three. Well, it's actually not directly there, but we'll get that aligned. Turn off nose wheel steering. Wait a second, is my, this might be hitting my brakes when I'm adjusting this. Okay, so we're gonna hit the brakes. We're gonna throttle up. And then at about here, we release. We go to full afterburner. We're at our rotate speed, so we're going to rotate. We're going to bring our landing gear up. All right, landing gear knob is up. Landing gear lights are all dark, so our landing gear is, in fact, up. We will withdraw our... Uh... Now what's really great about these modern aircraft is this thing auto trims. I am scrolling my alert list. Okay, here we go. This thing auto trims. If I put it in an attitude, it's going to stay in that attitude, which is just great. So I can just fly this thing pretty much however I want, and it, it's great. 
Now we don't have to worry, actually, we actually don't have to worry about flying coordinated in this because the flight control system does all that for us. And you can notice that if I am um, really snappy on the controls, it it rolls real quick. And we can just we can also pull on the stick as hard as we want. We're at 9 G's. And we're not going to stall out no matter what we do because the fly-by-wire system in this aircraft is designed to prevent us from absolutely getting ourselves wrecked and stalling out. Okay, so we see the airfield there. So I've got to move on to the next set of tutorials. Basic navigation. So we're in flight, or approximately five nautical miles north of Kusan, the airfield we just took off from. I need to be, uh, actually, I'm going to have to turn around, and I'm going to have to be up at Angels 5, which is 500 meters, or uh, 5,000 feet, sorry. So we can see on the right here, there's a little scrolling bar on my HUD. That is the um, indication for altitude. So, okay, we are now at Angels 500, or Angels 5. We can pause. All right, condition. Aircraft is level at 500 feet. Uh, I wonder what the heck is going on with our compass here. Because it is we got a target on HUD. It's probably a friendly, because it's got a little axe over it. I don't know that yet. And I don't know how our radar works. Oh, and our radar altimeter isn't on. But, oh well. So goal is to follow the INS, Inertial Navigation System flight plan. And then come back with an initial fix for landing. Uh, okay, so we need to blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch of background information that I don't really call, care about, about setting up waypoints. Uh, no, none of that I can do anything with right now. Because that's all stuff you had to adjust pre-flight. Um, let's pause so I can actually Uh, ooh. Okay, so I'm I'm just playing around with my radar cursor right now. It's going to be useful for IFF stuff later. We can see our waypoints okay. We're in HSD mode, okay. Okay, so how do we select our steer point? Plus the up arrow on, let's go list. Oh, we, have, we can't because we're paused. What is our airspeed? Our airspeed is quite high. Let's go to list and then nav. Nope. Um, Let's 
to go steer point. Steer point. Uh, ooh, ooh, uh, steer point two. Enter. Where is that? I think it should show us on HUD where our steer point is. So let's circle and try to find it. All right, there we see it. Pause again. Okay, so when selected, the steering point in the circle of the HSD turned solid. Uh, so that's what we're talking they're talking about right now. So it's this one. So we took off and flew right past it basically and did a turn and came back to it. So we're probably gonna want to select steer point three. Zoom out to 80 nautical miles. Uh, well, we can't while we're paused. Place the tadpole inside the FPM. Oh, okay. So that's what this is telling me where I have to put the uh, flight path marker to steer to the steer point. Aircraft can automatically switch to the next steer point as you approach the active steer point. Select ICP steer point page. So that is uh, steer point. And then and DCS right. Uh, DCS was, yes, that hat switch. I do not know what I'm doing here. Uh, let's. Okay. Okay. So it's DCS. Oh, DCS, DMS. Okay. There's so many acronyms in this, it's impossible. All right. So we'll adjust our heading a bit and come on to that steer point. Pause again. Actually, let's unpause. I need to gain some altitude.
Okay, so we see our steer point. DCS right while on this page will show us something. There we go. Shows the wind. Switch. Okay, HUD will switch to steer point three. Okay, yeah, so it's switched to three. So now we gotta go get our flight path marker on steer point three. What the heck was that? Now it would be hilarious now is uh, all of my follow, subscription, and other alerts that I've set up are actually sounds from this aircraft. So if somebody, like, say, raids me, it's going to give me a whole bunch of missile warning tones. <laughs> Which I I hope one day will be a great, great, hilarious event. Okay, so we need to climb up to, wow, 20,000 feet. We'll learn to perform a climb to altitude in a fuel efficient way. Fuel is always a concern, so everything possible should be done to conserve fuel. One fuel efficient climb profile is to climb at a set speed and adjust your climb angle to maintain that speed. Okay, so advance your throttle to mill power. Wait for 350 knots and then pull the stick and adjust the climb angle to main 350 knots to the climb. So that's basically how we always climb in IL-2. Uh, passing, set your... I don't know how to set my, set my altimeter or any of that. I mean, need to go back and look at that. So I'm going to go back and look and see if there isn't anything that I can find quickly about setting the altimeter. Is look at this already. We're already almost at an hour, and we've uh, basically just gotten off the ground, and we're learning navigation. I kind of expected this with this game. It is a very realistic sim, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so yeah, where is altimeter settings? We can probably unpause and try to set those. Although we need to increase to mill speed and then climb up, maintaining our 350, kilo, uh, 350 knots, I think it is actually. Alright, so our speed is now decreasing. Let's bring our angle down so that we're not decreasing below 350.
little further. see that we are actually pretty quickly approaching steer point three. Oh, when we are well above our altitude that we're supposed to be at. So how in the hell do I set my altimeter? Let's go back to comms and let's hit a cal. Cal are out. Nothing is working with that. Pause. Passing steer point three, the avionics will switch to steer point four and your HUD should show information relative to steer point four. Steer point information can also be displayed on the horizontal situation indicator located on the center control. What's that? Uh, sure. Uh, depending on the position of the instrument mode knob, What's the instrument node? Uh, oh, there it is. So that would be that. Uh, depending on the position of the instrument node knob, the HSI will indicate navigation information relative to the active tan can station or active steer point. Move the knob to TCN. Uh, and notice that the bearing indicator pointing to Kuhn Tekan moving to the three o'clock position as illustrated in the left screenshot below. Uh, what does the, any of that mean? The DME window on the top left of the instrument indicates 19.5 nautical mile and when centered in the CRS knob and the CDI indicates the bearing. What does any of this mean? Oh God. Okay, okay, so they're talking about this. It would be nice if they started, you know, with a screenshot of the damn thing or telling us what the hell it is before anything. Uh, but what the fuck does any of this mean? So they want me to put this to that and then it points to... Tucson, that makes sense because it's pointing about here. Tucson is about down there. 
Otherwise, it's pointing to our steer point, right? Yeah, so now it's pointing to our steer point, all right. I don't know why that's particularly helpful. So then next, as we overfly Wolf steer point four, check the INS coordinates of the IA. Uh, what? But, okay, so it wants us to adjust the coordinates of steer point four, but that's after we overfly it. And I don't get why it wants us to do that. Uh, autopilot can also be used to fly the aircraft while the pilot is busy with other tasks. This, you know, is going to be very, very useful because you you don't really fly this aircraft so much as you run all the systems. Uh, the autopilot is very reliable, features different modes of operation, pitch hold. I know enough about the autopilot that I know it's this right here. So I'm pretty sure... I hit that. There we go. As you hit the altitude hold to actually turn on the uh, whatchamacallit, the autopilot. And then there's a heading select option and a steering select option. The steering select option should be to the steer point, which it looks to be doing. But I'm going to pause it so I can read more on this. Uh, the mode that is interesting for us for this train mission is steering select mode that will follow the I and S. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. INS route it must be used in conjunction with the auto steer point toggle we discussed there uh, before. So we'll actually steer to the next waypoint as the current one is reached. Failure to use auto will result in the aircraft circling the current steer point when reached until the pilot switches to the next steer point manually. Yeah, that much I do know. Autopilot needs a few conditions to be enabled. These are documented in the dash one. Gear is not down. AR door is not open. What's the AR door? Out flaps switch is not extended. AOA is not greater than 15 degrees. That makes sense because this thing's supposed to stall, I think, after 15 degrees. Although I don't know how you'd get to 15 degrees of AOA. And there's a whole bunch of other things, but whatever. Move the left AP switch to steering select and move the right AP switch to alt hold. Uh, oh, so, okay, I'm thinking these were the same thing, but there's alt hold and then Attitude hold, okay. There's no auto throttle, of course. Aircraft will steer towards the AHSI bearing pointer if set to the nav mode. It will also compensate for wind. Approaching steer point four, the system will switch to steer point five and the AP will finally fly the jet to, to the steer point. This auto steer point was selected earlier, yep. When manual is, yeah, it'll go and wait until, uh, if it's in manual mode, it'll just go and wait for pilot input before it stops circling. Let's look to the lower right block of information on the HUD. Steer point five selected. That's not yet because we haven't flown over steer point four. Uh, Ooh, 
what is this telling me to do? It wants me to go to the toss page, but what the fuck is that? I mean, seriously, like half of this is, this manual is not really, it, it borders on being really good, but also not very good because it just doesn't explain a lot of the stuff when it I could use an additional explanation of it. So it's, it's telling me, hey, uh, go to this toss page, but where the fuck is the toss page? So it's the cruise page is the toss page, but who would have guessed? All right, let's pause again as we read. So yeah, you've got toss and it's we're on four, it's on five and it's just telling me random shit. Required ground speed is what? Time over speeder point, uh, range, home, and endurance, what? Let's select well, the cruise page with button five of the ICP, DCS right to review all the available sub modes. Okay, so range, okay, that makes sense. Um, home point, that tells me where home is, right? And endurance, uh, so time to bingo is currently one hour, 19 minutes. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so that makes sense. I guess, clear as mud. Okay, I gotta I gotta stand up real quick and stretch because I've been sitting too long. <clears throat> it's no joke to say that flight sims literally kick my ass. Is just the way I've got my feet and chair set up, or my uh, pedals and chair set up, it uh, leaves me kind of getting sore after a little bit of time. I'm going to adjust my chair and see if we can't change that. Now, at least I don't have to worry about bad posture because I tend to have to be in a very specific posture to play flight sims. Okay, so let me take a drink because we're doing a lot of talking, just reading this manual. Ah. So when not mode selected, only asterisks of the scratch pad are highlighted. What? Okay, so I assume that means that we return and we go to cruise. No, no. I don't know what you're talking about, manual. When not mode selected, only asterisks of scratch pad are highlighted. Here it is highlighted and the HUD displays ETA. Uh, is it maybe talking about how if we don't select things no what the fuck uh yeah i got no clue the fuck uh 
Yeah, so we enter. Sequence is not going to help us. DMS right, nope. Yeah, this this uh, doesn't make any sense. When not mode selected, only the asterisk of the scratch pad. And what it's showing me is that uh, it's filled in, and highlighted over the entire thing. Here it's highlighted. And the HUD display is ETA. And I mean, it does that for us too. Uh, and required ground speed. The DED TUS subpage also provides current time. What is DED TUS? Would have been nice if you told me what that is. Um, desired uh, DSTOS, which is planned time over steer point. Then ETA, which is our estimated time over steer point based on current speed and required ground speed needed to reach the steer point, steer point at desired time. Okay, so that's why ours is at such a high speed, over a thousand knots, because we, we dicked around a bit. Hey, Tank, uh, this... This thing, well, this aircraft, honestly, it does handle like a dream because the F-16 is a fly-by-wire aircraft. Uh, nothing is actually connected to the flight control surfaces, so you can just pull whatever you want and it, it, it'll it do the maneuvers. It also means that uh, it has auto trim, so if you set it on a heading, it's going to pretty much stay on that unless it gets blown off by wind. And then uh, it... Uh, its flight control system prevents you from stalling out too, so you can just yank on the handle as hard as you want and uh, you won't stall. Uh, we're currently learning some navigation bits and uh, I am getting extremely confused by most of this. But we got off the ground first try. Technically, we had a, a bit of a hiccup with controls not working as we went through the entire engine startup and then removed the chocks, turned off the parking brake, and found out we couldn't stop the aircraft because key binds were just not set. And unfortunately, you can't bind keys while in mission in this simulation. Okay, so this is telling me a bunch more stuff about... Um, uh, and I'm, I'm currently reading a manual. I've got it on my laptop right now. So uh, bear with me as I'm reading through it. At least we do have some some neat features because last time I played this, they didn't have a cockpit model or a pilot model. But right now they've got, oh, I can't do it while paused. But right now they've got these checklists on your knee boards, which is really useful because it means that at, once I learn this enough, I can just refer to the check board, uh, checklists on the knee boards rather than trying to figure it out on my computer or something. And it's telling me a whole bunch of stuff about navigation, and I don't know if I really want to care about it. But it would probably be best to at least read through it at some point. What is our ETA? So we're going to be to this next waypoint in about a minute. 51? So this MFD right now is showing our current location and our steer point, which is highlighted in. Uh, oh, we are going really slow. Let's add some speed. That might be why we're having some trouble. This should be dropping. We're letting autopilot handle some of this. So range on the tank, I actually just, what was that? It was that an RWR blip? Nothing. Okay. 
So our range. That doesn't help. Uh, uh, endurance. Time to bingo. Well, it heavily depends on uh, what our throttle's at. The F15. Uh, the F-16 is notoriously short-ranged. I think it's actually only about 500 nautical miles in a clean configuration without drop tanks. It's not really designed to... Oh, I uh, threw myself into afterburner, which is why it's burning so much fuel so quick. But it's not really designed to be a long-range aircraft, which is also kind of good because it means that most of our missions won't take too long. This one's been taking quite a while because we've been paused this entire time. All right, now the manual's got this thing going about 486 knots. So I'm going to speed up to that and see what happens. We've got autopilot engaged, so it's just keeping us on the same heading and uh, same altitude. Actually, we can drop in altitude a bit because we're quite a bit above the altitude we intended to be at. We intended to be at pretty much exactly 20,000 feet, so we're going to drop down a bit. See in our HUD that diamond is our steer point. Let's flip autopilot back on. And I think I mentioned earlier that uh, IL-2 is not a one-to-one -one flight sim. This one is, so I actually have this cursor, and I have to hit all these buttons and do all these things. Uh, there are some key bound. Uh, there are some keys bound, but that's kind of the uh, exception in this. I just don't quite get why the ETA is not going down. That should be time to that steer point. This is, should be telling me how much fuel I'll have when I'm at that steer point because we're at 48,000 or 4,800 pounds. Optimal, al okay, so this is optimal altitude for cruising. I think it's saying it's 44,000 feet. Time to bingo is 27. Okay, so um, let's go look into what else I need to do. Did I not? Uh, did I need to set up my INS before I took off? Maybe I did. I don't. I don't. I didn't see anything about that. But it, oh no, it's telling me about ILS right now. Okay, so. Um, yeah. It's going into a lot of detail about uh, precisely flying over steer points. I'll read that later because this is like a like two solid pages on this of just text. Well, passing steer point five on the aircraft. We haven't passed steer point five yet. We are about to. Uh, but passing steer point five still on autopilot. Uh, steers towards uh, steer point six and uh, it's time to switch from INS to TACAN navigation what does that mean as we planned before the flight we know we were flying close to Boli new uh, close to newly implemented vortex stations what is uh, any of this mean Uh, we decided to call them Vortac to differentiate them, but they behave the same way as TACANs and BMS, okay. Muon and Moco, uh, Mopo are two Vortac stations with a limited range of 40 nautical miles. Let's fly direct to Muon. 
Select the TILS page and enter Muon Channel. So once we get to steer point five and start steering to steer point six, we're going to do that. It should be just about any second now. There we go. So it says uh, list, then we want to go to point INS. Nope, uh, list and uh, nav. No. Uh, let's pause and take a look then. Select the TILS page. What the heck does that mean? Uh, oh, oh, I'm dumb. It's um, this one because the button says TILS. And then we need to select uh, how. Okay, we enter just 6.5 in this location. Enter, okay, and then what? 0.65, why does it say 0.65x? Check that instrument mode is set to TCN. Okay, so we're gonna unpause. We're gonna set instrument mode to TCN. And look at your HSI. That is this thing down here. Uh, if the off flag is not displayed, indicated that one is in range, what's the off flag? On, okay. This manual is, yeah, kind of good, kind of not good, because it it to tells me to look at this, and then it says the off flag is not on, and the off flag is up would be up here. I assume. The bearing pointer is at two five seven. Looks about right, 257. Um, autopilot still flying and steering select, so let's adjust uh, move the heading roll bug. What is that? Let's move the heading roll bug and the station bearing with the left HSI knob and switch from AP to heading select. Okay, so. So, okay, that needs to go to where we're selecting, and then we need to switch this to heading select. Okay. I mean, it could have, yeah, it could have told me what that bug was, but I did figure it out pretty quick. Um, what was that? That sounded like a RWR noise, but there should be no enemies around here. All right, let's read the next section. At a distance of four nautical miles from the station, the bearing pointer will start drifting to the side. Remember, we're flying at flight level. Uh, 200, which is a bit more than two or uh, three new, uh, nautical miles. I keep seeing NM and thinking it's Newton meter because that's what I work with a lot. Distance measuring equipment indicates a slant measuring. What is the distance measuring equipment? <laughs> Please tell me. Indicates a, sl a slant range and therefore at this altitude, station passage will happen at about three and a half nautical miles. Um, oh, so it's, this is the distance measuring equipment. It would have been nice for you to tell me that manual.
because not even the manual doesn't even uh, align with the numbers it's talking about on its images. All right. And then it's going to have me RTB from there, I guess. Remember that the MOAs west of Kusan are active. I think it's talking about these because it didn't tell me anything else about MOAs. And these are not, uh, these are almost certainly not minute of angles. And it's saying, yeah, steer clear of MOA 19, which that is uh, M19 and M17. So they're probably air exclusion zones for whatever reason. We're going to unpause and we're going to fly just a bit. Until we overfly that marker. Look at the ground and the clouds and uh, after playing Isle 2 we can see how spoiled I am with beautiful clouds and a beautiful sky and ground and all that. As in this it's pretty bare bones. This isn't intended to be a very pretty flight sim, it's designed to be a very accurate flight sim. Now what I'd really love to play is like a, a mecha simulator, like uh, something as complicated as this, but for mechs. Maybe a little bit less complicated, but just, you know, you, you have like all these controls and, and everything that you have to deal with. Nine, eight miles. And yeah, it's just going to fly us pretty much straight there. So then we're going to fly manually back to get onto our route. Steering clear of MOA 19, and then we're going to engage our steering again. So we're going to disengage that. We are going to turn right. Let's not pull super high G's. Oh, I started controlling things so the uh, autopilot disengaged. Makes sense. Man, it is it is so easy to pull high G's in this aircraft. Cause I'm barely on the stick and it said uh it was at like a one point four G turn. And we could just if we wanted to pull four G's straight up. <laughs> All right, so then they want us to get into um, 7.5 for TACAN. We're still in that menu, so we can just put that in. Then we switch this cursor. And once we overfly the intended bearing, the intended line, we switch back to autopilot. Actually, we can turn on uh, altitude hold for the autopilot right now. Now start our descent, so we overfly jewel op at 28... Okay, so uh, I read that as 28,000 feet, but they want us to descend to 2,800 feet.
let's get to uh, we're gonna wait a second before we enter next mode we'll zoom in our MFD a little bit so we have a better view of our flight plan and we're gonna wait just a bit longer to be on that line before we engage the autopilot heading. All right, we will. Oh, no, oh, heading select. Wrong one. So that's got us on. I'm going to pause again so I can read the manual a bit more. So once we're on steer point seven, jewel op, which is the last steer point of this mission, TACAN is still set to move on. Yeah, so we switched that over. We got that taken care of. Um, and the HSI can remain in TACAN mode. Okay. We now start to descent. So we overfly a jewel op at 2,800 feet. Hardest point to know is when to start your descent. The landing steer point selected and it's diamond visible in the HUD. Wait until the diamond is about seven degrees below your horizon ghost line. That's your cue to start descending. Okay. The diamond is not gonna be in my HUD though, is it? Let me just check something for sanity's sake. Yeah, we're good. Get back onto our steer point. Oh no, wait, that's not our steer point. What do we have selected then? And where the heck is our ground steer point anyway? Now let's go to steer point. Turn, turn. Steer point 6A. Let's enter 7. Enter. Okay. Altitude. Altitude. Yeah, yeah. But you're whining. Okay, so we got quite a ways to go before we actually. I need to descend. Uh, another blip. But uh, we can't really do anything with our radar because our radar is not sensor of influence, I guess. So it's at about seven degrees down. So let's start dry diving back down. We're gonna come back down to about 2,800 feet.
Got a city out there. Oh, we are in uh, South Korea. Because this was kind of like a Cold War gone hot kind of thing. Because this does have a dynamic campaign. Let's uh, level out. And when we get into the dynamic campaign, that might be fun. All right, so we need to switch it back to, okay, uh, switch our comms back. Uh, our comms are already fine. And it's telling me to switch my altimeter again, but I literally have no idea how to change the altimeter. I don't think it went through that. I might have to find that and uh, check it off again. All right, so we're mission moving on to mission three set up. And we're supposed to be about 15 nautical miles south of Kusan. We are about 21 miles. And we are just about over Julop. Six heading 360. We are a little bit off of that. Speed is supposed to be 420 knots. And uh, they said our fuel is just supposed to be hitting bingo. So let's pass Julop before we worry about the rest of this manual's information. It's an interesting shape of a lake down there. All right, let's Engage this. We can see. This is not right, I don't think. Should be steering us right towards the air base. Okay, there it is. It actually is. Uh, let's pause again. So there's supposed to be a starting, uh, this is supposed to be a starting point for different scenarios for landing, which makes sense because they've got a whole bunch of different ones. But the first one is going to be a uh, straight approach. Okay, so landing straight in, straight in landing, um, distance between six to nine nautical miles, nice. Um, landing phase will start aligned with the runway axis, altitude should be about 2,000 feet, airspeed less than 300 knots for safe extension of the landing gear. Uh, landing will start aligned, you can use the TACAN to do that. Okay, so the TACAN is also aligning, okay, so it's not just pointing me at things, it's aligning me, I think. That makes sense. So we are over 15 nautical miles out and uh, about 2,500. We're a little low compared to that, but we're good enough that we can manage it. A few miles to adjust parameters for a straight in. You should see the runway uh, 36 in front of you. Yeah, we do. It's quite a ways out, but we do see it. So we are, at, oh, we're actually 13 miles out right now. Uh, so we gotta talk to ATC, so it's gonna be TT, request landing. Goblin 2-1, air 16 inbound for landing. Goblin 2-1. Uh, what? Um, uh, uh-oh, we need to switch to three. Enter. T. T. Uh. 
or enter. Goblin 2, Airborne, Singleton, F-16s, 2000. Goblin 2, what? What the hell? Okay, what the hell? Because we didn't change our frequencies or anything. Maybe we did change it, but uh, it should. We're on page 43. I gotta freaking go back and check a bunch of bullshit. Approach two nine two six five zero. Approach should be set com four. We are on four. Enter. Goblin oh, wait. two one F sixteen four miles southeast two thousand request wait on Goblin two one F sixteen four miles southeast two thousand inbound from free adding. Okay, so Good we morning. have Goblin two one in a sound approach. Welcome back. That's just a radar coach. Runway three six. Goblin two one turn right heading one eight five climb to four thousand. Q in H two nine eight five. Okay, so we flubbed that a bit because I didn't really know what they were. Warning, 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 warning. What the hell was that warning? Check our. Yeah, nothing. Stop it, two, one. Turn right heading 195. We're gonna get a ways away. Climb back up a bit before we actually start our approach. Oh, was that the bingo warning, I think? Okay, now we are a little ways away. Let's get this Goblin set again. Two one, turn right heading two one zero, climb to four thousand. Where's that runway? It's way out over there. So what the hell is our aircraft doing? Is we it should have been turning the opposite direction from what it Robin did. Two, one. Turn left heading two zero five. Yep, yep, two zero five. We're just gonna follow what this is saying. And that's the airfield over there. Got the lights in. We 
we've had our nav lights on this whole time, normally we'd probably turn them off for a combat mission. So he's probably, uh, air traffic control's probably got me flying until I uh, basically capture the line from the runway. Copy the 2 one. Turn right heading 215. All right, 215. Probably drop speed a bit. We can hit return. We can go to tills. Oops. Actually, a cal. No. Uh, we, what was it? Cruise. Then sequence. Oh no! Cruise sequence. Uh, Time to bingo is 16 minutes. We've been climbing way too much. I am quite the uh, inattentive pilot here. Copy the 2 1. Turn right heading 225. Descend to 4000. Alright, 225. Descend to 4000 feet. Alright. Oh, 225 is. We passed it. Here we go. 225. Descend to 4000 feet. We'll throttle back. I'm way more nervous uh, bringing this thing into land. Two, one. Turn right heading zero one five. Descend to three thousand. Runway three six. I'm way more nervous uh, trying to land this than I am any of the propeller aircraft. Although jets are supposed to be easier to land than prop aircraft, in some ways at least. Bang zero one five, almost on. Copy two one. Enough. Turn right heading zero three zero. Zero three zero. Okay. We overshot the runway a bit. Let's keep descending. This kind of landing requires uh, an amount of precision that I'm not used to. Five, okay. Dropping a little bit. Let's keep our aircraft level. So we're pretty close to approaching. Let me go through and read more on what I'm supposed to be doing for landing. 
right, page 41. Let's go back to that. Quest on an unrestricted approach. Oh, for, okay. Uh, let me actually read this instead of just uh, uh, read this out loud. From this point on, we will no longer refer to airspeed, but instead use angle of attack. Optimal approach airspeeds depend on your gross weight, and the best way to be on speed is to forget all about airspeed and think 13 AOA for landing. Okay. And we do get a special marker for that when we drop the gear. I remember that much. First, lower your landing gear. We'll check your airspeed is below 305 knots. So our airspeed, we can stand to drop a bit more. It's below 305 knots. Let's drop our gear. Gear handle is not down. Oh. Copy uh, 2 1. Turn right heading 355. Five. Descend to 2000. Vectors to final. Runway 36. There we go. Landing gear is down. Dropping. Let's go, um, say again. Goblin 2 1, repeat last transmission. Goblin 2 1, descend to 2000, vectors to final, runway 36. So landing gear is down. And in this aircraft, landing gear also drops your flaps. Okay, so. First, lower your landing gear. Doing so will automatically deploy leading and trailing edge flaps, and the FLCS will take switch to takeoff and landing gains. Drag caused by dirtying up your aircraft will decrease your speed further. The HUD symbology will also change. Notably, an AOA break bracket will be displayed upon nose wheel lock on down position. The symbol is used in conjunction with the flight path marker and uh, the indexer. Okay, so that we've got that. We also got this uh, 2.5 degree pitch line. At 10 nautical miles, Kusan approach will call you to switch to tower frequency and request landing. Tower will clear you to continue inbound and ask you to report on final. But we are nine nautical miles out. Is it really going to make me switch things around right now? Goblin 2 1, you are causing a traffic conflict. Contact. Oh, of course. God fucking damn it. Some of this is way too complicated. Sequencing or depart the area. Goblin 2-1, air 16, inbound for I landing. fucking contacted for approach. Goblin 
Goblin, two one. S sixteen inbound oh my for fucking God. Goblin, two one. This is so fucking dumb that I have to do this so last minute. Okay, what the hell was anything before? Okay, comms it needs to be on four, right? Enter. Let's go. Two one. Approach. F sixteen. Five miles southwest. One thousand inbound from free landing. Goblin two one. Contact tower for landing. Switch to two nine two three zero. Good morning, Goblin 2-1. In a sound approach. Continue in now. The straight in approach. Runway 36. Welcome back. Q in H2985. Alright, so now I have to go freaking. Well, trying to fly my aircraft. Switch comm channel. Fucking A. And that's not even the right one. Com. Com 3. Enter. Yeah. Can you quest landing? Goblin two one F sixteen inbound for landing. Goblin two one Kunsan Tower continue inbound for. Runway that is the most stupid final. fucking pain in the ass thing ever. Having to switch between that shit in the middle of a landing approach. Okay, so now that that's fucking done, and, you know, most multiplayer, I don't think anybody actually has to do anything with the stupid ATC. Most runways and BMS are equipped with a visual, visual landing aid system called Precision Approach Path Indicator, or PAPI. It consists of four equally spaced lights situated to one or both sides of the runway. The lights will be visible as white or red according to the position of the aircraft with respect to the optimal glide slope. The more red lights visible, the lower you are in the glide slope, the more white, the higher. The optimal glide slope is then flown with two red and two white lights seen. Well, that's what we've got here. It's hard to imagine we are actually on the act, uh, the right glide slope right now. Okay, so then you know you have to place the FPM on the runway threshold to land. Yep. You also know that you have to maintain the two red, two whites, and the pape, and you have to fly a three degree glide slope to the runway. The FPM has to be around uh, the negative 2.5 dashed line. This is done with the side stick controller? What? All I have to do, all you have to, all I have to do is to understand angle attack and manage that. Uh, how to control it with a throttle, yep. AOA is the angle, yeah, I know what that is. And then we've got the little indicator with AOA brackets. So yellow. Like what we have now is we're too fast, and red is we are too slow. So we gotta throttle down. Bring that flight path marker directly onto the runway. All right, we are good. I 
Gotta be very careful on the controls because this aircraft is quite sensitive. We're coming in too low. We got that fixed a little bit. And we gotta slow down. So we're going to touch down a little late, but I think we're just going to take it and run. Okay, so we had a bit of a rough landing, but we did land, and that's what counts. I got clearance! Don't bitch at me! and we're going to go to uh, INS, check our velocity so that way we're uh, on the ground and we know how fast we're going. And uh, we didn't engage nose wheel steering. Nose wheel steering is not working. Why are you not working? I fucking hate this shit. Why is it just suddenly not working? Seriously, it should. It's just a fucking button. Why is it not working? And it's not like I can check my controls or anything, because this is such a pain in the ass. Goblin 2, Kunshan Tower. Taxi clear of the runway. I'd love to, but I can't freaking turn. Okay, I'm just gonna end. And I'm gonna call it here because this was a lot. This went a lot freaking worse than I thought it was because this does not like to run nicely for anything. And uh, the control, I've ha I had a whole bunch of control issues with this, uh, just trying to get it started up. So I'm gonna call it here. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Yeah, this was not a great stream. I might go and uh, do more with this on my own later to try to get all the bull crap worked out is uh, none of it is really clear. And then uh, we can probably do some of it later, but otherwise I'm probably not going to stream this for this week. Uh, next stream will be probably on, uh, what is it Thursday? Yeah. Thursday at 7 PM. I'm not sure what we're going to be playing. Probably not a flight sim this time. It's going to just be something else. Uh, maybe more Surviving Mars or something else. But thank you all for watching. And I will see you. Or actually, let me see if there's anybody on to raid. Check my... Okay, I... Um... Wait a second, we've got basically no viewers, so I'm not going to bother rating anybody. So I'm just going to end the stream here.